Hello everyone. Welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm Lisa Curcio. In the second release of free products during Stampin' Up's largest sale called Celebration, there is an embossing folder that caught my eye and it's called the Country Floral. And this is the card we're going to be creating today. I'm going to teach you how to use the Stampin' Blends to make a beautiful focal point on this dynamic embossing folder. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll be able to find a link down in the video description below which will navigate you over to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for today's project. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. Here's a good close-up of the card we're going to be creating today. Isn't this beautiful? Those great spring colors are really going to bring out that Easter feel here. Keep in mind, you can change the greeting on this to use for any type of card that you like. Make sure you stick with me to the end of the video too, because I have an alternate sample to share with you. I mentioned this beautiful embossing folder in the introduction. This is called the Country Floral. Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year will allow you to choose free product with a $50 product purchase. And this is one of those products. I'm gonna start by using a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This is gonna be the layer on the front of that card and I'm gonna emboss that. This is a dynamic folder. You'll notice when I have it folded shut that it looks quite thicker than what you're used to. And that's because it's gonna leave a beautiful deep impression in the paper. I've got my Big Shot die cutting machine here and I'll go ahead and use my basic platform. Because of the depth of this folder, you do not need a clear cutting mat on the bottom. So I'm gonna place my folder and my cardstock on top and I'll place another clear mat over the top of that and we'll just crank that through. That will leave us with this beautiful deep impression. The next thing I want to do is I want to die cut some circles and I've pulled out a couple circles here from the layering circles framelits. This is one of my absolute favorite products simply because of the number of dies that you get in cascading sizes both with plain circles and with scallop circles. I've got my Big Shot once again and I've switched over to the magnetic platform. That platform I used previously will work with the thin die adapter that comes with your Big Shot platform. I like this one because it's going to help hold my metal dies in place. It's just a matter of preference. It is not required. I will put a clear cutting mat on the bottom to protect it. And I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock here. And I've got my two circle dies. So with the cutting edge down, I've got my larger one here. And I'm going to place my smaller one inside of it. And I'm going to nest these together looking to see if I have about the same circumference to create a frame or a ring, if you will all the way around. Once I'm happy with that, I'll put a clear mat over the top to protect it, and then we will crank that through to die cut it. When we take the pieces apart, that's gonna leave us with this perfect ring. My next step will be to add some color. And since I'm gonna be using the Stampin' Blends, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of the smaller grid sheets in order to protect my work surface. Remember that the Stampin' Blends are an alcohol-based marker. They will bleed through the cardstock, so you wanna make sure you have your work surface protected. I'm gonna be using three colors. I have the Light Flirty Flamingo, the Light Daffodil Delight, and the Light Old Olive. We're only going to need to color in a small area because that's just gonna be the spotlight or the focal point. Now there's a couple things that you can do. You can take your circle that's already been die cut and grab a pencil and you can line it up where you're gonna want the focal point to be. I know I'm gonna concentrate mostly on this rose and very lightly, you can trace the inside of the circle circumference. I'm gonna give you a tip too when you color this. You're gonna to wanna to color just a hair beyond that pencil mark. Now I know that's gonna be near impossible to see on the video because I wanna make sure it's light enough that I can erase it. Now this is not an endorsement, but I am a huge fan of the Bic Mechanical Pencil simply because the lead is very soft and the eraser works like a charm. Because this is an embossed surface, you're gonna to want to erase and pencil very lightly because obviously there's raised and recessed areas here. I did not do any shading, and I'm gonna show you this on the original card. It's gonna look like I did, and that's simply because of the embossed paper. When we've texturized the paper, it's going to be broken down in some areas because of the embossing folder. So the great thing about the alcohol-based markers is it's gonna lend credence to shading without doing any of that extra step. I'm gonna be using the thin side or the chisel tip of my marker, which is designated here by the thin line underneath the cap. I'll pull that cap off and I'm going to color in the areas. Once the coloring is done, I'm going to take that ring and I'm going to hold it back over those pencil marks to make sure 
that I don't have an area that's going to be exposed. Now remember you can manipulate this a little bit left and a little bit right. I'm going to come back to my pencil and I'm very lightly going to erase those pencil lines. Now if you feel like they're not going to show, you don't have to erase them. With my ring now, I'm going to place mini dimensionals on the back so I can create a little bit of an elevation here and a little bit of visual interest. So I've got my mini dimensionals here and I'll go ahead and I'll pull a couple of those off. And I'm just going to work symmetrically around this ring. They do not have to be at a certain place. I just wanted to make sure that they were properly balanced so that when I mail my card and it goes through the mailing machine at the post office, that I'm not going to have a card that's kind of lopsided. Once I have those in place, I'll just go ahead and burnish those down and I'll peel off the paper backing. I'll come back here to the card base and I am just going to carefully align that to make sure that I don't have any white areas exposed. I did find it very difficult to go back in with the Stampin' Blends and try to fill it in. So there we go, we've got that portion. This now is gonna get mounted on a base of Whisper White cardstock. This measures five and a half by eight and a half. Remember, if you're here from YouTube, you'll be able to find a link down in the description below leading you to pictures and cutting dimensions. I'm using that bone folder for that nice crisp edge. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna switch over to my full size dimensionals this time. And I'm gonna balance these out as well. Remember we talked about those alcohol markers bleeding through the cardstock. That is normal. That's the sign of a really good alcohol marker. Now, although I prefer to use thick whisper white cardstock when I'm using my Stampin' Blends, this technique with the embossing folder worked absolutely beautiful on regular whisper white cardstock for this type of card. I'm gonna add a couple more here just to make sure I'm good and balanced. And then we'll take off those paper backings. Now, once those are off, we're gonna go ahead and mount this in the center of our card base. I'm gonna to look to leave a little bit of a white border all the way around as symmetrically as possible. I've also cut a very small piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping on here. If you have a catalog and you're looking for this, you're not going to find it in there because it's part of a special promotion. It's called the Celebration Coordination Promotion. These products are available from March 1st through March 31st or while supplies last. So by the end of March, they're gone, whether they're sold out or not. You're gonna find these four framelit sets are going to coordinate with the free products that were part of Celebration, Stampin' Up's largest sale. So if you purchase the framelits in a quantity of $50 or more, you'll be able to choose the free coordination products to go with them. The two products down here are new. This is the More Than Words that I'm gonna be using. And of course, there's this absolutely fabulous story label punch that coordinates with this stamp set. I'll be using my Flirty Flamingo ink pad to stamp the words Easter that I've mounted from that stamp set. I'm gonna to try to stamp these a little bit further to the bottom to make some room for the word happy. I'll be using Pear Pizzazz ink for the word happy. That comes from a different stamp set and that one's called Thoughtful Banners. It is one of my favorites because there's lots of greetings and they can be built to make custom phrases. You'll be able to find this product in the annual catalog. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in a complimentary copy of the catalog or of course the occasions catalog, I would be happy to send those to you. Just leave me a comment below so I can get your address. And of course, I'll include the sale brochures as well. I'll ink up the word happy and that's gonna go here near the top. Coming back here to my card, I'm gonna flip this piece over and I'm gonna add dimensionals to the back. And I'll add full size because I know they're going to fit. I'll add one on each end. I'm careful not to add anything in the center because I know this is going to overlap over the ring. And then I'll mount this here near the top and press that in place. You're gonna notice on this one, the greeting is a little bit darker than my original card. This one I stamped off that ink on scratch paper to make it a little bit lighter before I stamped it here on the actual tag for the greeting. I would love to know which one you like better. As I promised you, I have another sample using that absolutely gorgeous country floral embossing folder. This is the Petal Pink cardstock that I've used here. I edged it with a small piece of silver foil sheet added some small silver embellishments to really pop that out. And do you notice this shape right here? That shape is from this 
fabulous punch I was just telling you about a few minutes ago called the Story Label Punch. If you have enjoyed today's video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. It makes YouTube and I very happy. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do that below. Next to that, there'll be a small bell icon. Go ahead and click that. That will give you notifications of when I upload a new video here, as well as when I'm live on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.